The gold and silver markets have been tamed for decades. You have to realize that literally every other commodities has a futures market where the price of underlying stock derives value of the futures market. But not on gold and silver, no sir. They made sure that those two have their physical value derived from futures price. So, the price of physical silver is what the paper silver traders on futures markets decide. Yes, it's peak clown world, and no you aren't allowed to touch gold and silver. Silver has insane short positions against it. This squeezes and it could easily go to $1,000. The ultimate way of course to end the manipulation is to own the physical. Once the bullion banks can't access physical there will be a monumental short squeeze. Physical silver has always been on a massive discount because of their futures market shenanigans. Their prices are rigged. Why silver? Apart from the attention from Reddit raiders, the fundamentals for silver look extremely good and the metal has been undervalued for months. First off, at its core, silver is a monetary metal. You should be bullish on silver for the same reason you should be bullish on gold. The money printing and the borrowing and the spending will continue. In order to turn bearish on gold and silver, you have to believe the Federal Reserve is actually going to tighten monetary policy and the dollar is going to remain strong. But given the massive dose of monetary heroin the central bank has injected into the economy, the Fed really has no way out. There is no exit strategy from this extreme monetary policy. That bodes well for both silver and gold in the long term. Furthermore, silver has been undervalued compared to gold for quite a while. The run-up the last 48 hours dropped the silver-gold ratio below 70 for the first time in a while, but that's still historically high, meaning silver still has some room to run higher just to catch up with gold. The silver-gold ratio is the number of ounces of silver it takes to buy one ounce of gold. It has been historically high for months. It climbed to well over 100 to 1 back in March. We saw the ratio shrink as silver followed its historical trajectory and outperformed gold as the yellow metal climbed above $2,000 an ounce. With the ratio currently over 68 to 1, it remains historically high. The modern average over the last century has been between 40 and 60 to 1. The supply-demand dynamics are also positive for silver. Silver investment demand hit a five-year high in 2020. It won't likely slow in 2021. And while industrial demand took a big hit due to the coronavirus pandemic, it is expected to rebound as the global economy begins to recover. Silver demand will also likely get a boost from the push towards solar power and other green energy initiatives in the coming years. Solar power generation is expected to nearly double by 2025 according to a report released last summer by the Silver Institute. Even if the global economy recovers more slowly than expected in the wake of the pandemic, green energy demand for silver will likely remain robust. Analysts expect many government stimulus plans will include funding for green initiatives. On the supply side, mine output fell sharply in 2020. Production was projected to fall by 6.3% to about 780.1 million ounces. The big drop in silver output is largely a function of mine shutdowns due to coronavirus, but mine output was already trending down before the pandemic. Global mine production fell by 1.3% in 2019. In a nutshell, the GameStop run-up is a bit of a head-scratcher, but the Reddit raiders might be onto something with silver. Welcome back to the Nomad Economist, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Most investors who focus on precious metals and commodities know that gold had a great year in 2020, up 24.6%. However, not as many know that silver did even better. Silver was up 47.4% in 2020, rising from $17.80 per ounce on January 2, 2020, to $26.35 per ounce on December 31, 2020. Silver didn't just outperform gold in 2020. It also outperformed every other major asset class, including U.S. small cap stocks, up 18.5%, U.S. stocks, up 15.5%, U.S. corporate bonds, up 9.7%, and U.S. treasuries, up 3.6%. Many other asset classes declined in price in 2020, including commodities, the U.S. dollar, real estate and crude oil. Silver backed off a little in early 2021, it's now trading around $25.25 per ounce but it has held onto almost all of its 2020 gains. 
Of course, the question for investors is, where do we go from here? For reasons explained below, investors should expect continued strong outperformance by silver both in bullion form and in the form of shares in well-run silver mining companies. Before turning to the fundamentals that will send silver prices higher, it's useful to clear away some of the fog and outright myths surrounding the role of silver in the monetary system and the relationship between the price of silver and the price of gold. Silver to gold comparisons are apples to oranges despite the fact that both silver and gold are elements in precious metals. Let us begin by looking at a simple fact. While silver and gold are both precious metals, silver is a commodity, and gold is not. This statement surprises many viewers, but it's true. The difference turns on the definition of a commodity. A commodity is a generic and fungible input used with other inputs in manufacturing or other processing activity. Copper is a commodity used in wires. Coal is a commodity used to make steel. Corn is a commodity used in food processing. Silver is a commodity used in many industrial processes, including water purification, tableware, solar panels, electrical contacts, X-ray film, mirrors and medical instruments. It's the best electrical conductor of any metal. It is also used in automobile emission control equipment. All of these industrial and scientific applications qualify silver as a commodity input. Gold is not good for much of anything except as money. Yes, I know that gold is mined from the ground like other commodities, and it is traded on commodity exchanges, but it's not a commodity. There are some specialized applications such as coatings for space helmets and ultra-thin wires made from, 5 nines, gold, but that's about it. Jewelry is just bullion that you can wear, it's not a generic input. Gold is only good as money. Still, it's the best form of money. Of course, silver also performs as a precious metal along with gold, platinum and palladium, and it has long been used as a form of money in coins and bars. The US dollar itself was based on the older Spanish dollar, also known as a piece of eight, in Spanish, real de ocho. And, that history points to the difficulty of valuing silver and forecasting its price. Silver is both a form of money and an industrial commodity. Its monetary price responds to the same factors as gold, including inflation, interest rates, flight to safety and the exchange value of the dollar. At the same time, silver but not gold, responds to the business cycle, since more or less silver may be needed for industrial processes as the economy is either in expansion or contraction. Of course, it is possible to forecast silver prices by taking account of both the precious metals factors and the business cycle factors. The point is that silver price vectors often diverge from gold price vectors because gold is a pure play on money while silver is a dual play on money and the industrial economy. This hybrid role for silver can often be frustrating for investors who see gold surging while silver marks time. They may be quick to allege price manipulation in the silver market. The reason is much more mundane, involving only supply and demand for industrial commodities. Another myth about silver prices involves the infamous, 16 to 1, ratio of gold to silver prices. Silver advocates suggest that the price of gold should not be more than 16 times the price of silver. They base this on a misreading of history and law. Today gold is $1,842 per ounce, and silver is $25.24 per ounce, which yields a ratio of about 73 to 1. If you believe that the appropriate ratio is 16 to 1, then the price of silver would have to be $115 per ounce, assuming gold is unchanged. The silver bulls make this case and suggest that only market manipulation is keeping silver away from that $115 per ounce target. The entire 16 to 1 argument is nonsense. It's a popular talking point among some silver aficionados, but it has no economic significance whatsoever. With that said, there's no doubt that the price of silver is influenced to some extent by the price of gold. While the two do not move in lockstep, and while there is no necessary ratio between the two prices, it is the case that the factors that drive gold prices higher, inflation, low interest rates, flight to quality will also drive silver prices higher. Given silver's recent outperformance and the tailwinds provided by the surging price of gold, what are the prospects for silver prices in the months ahead? Right now, my models are telling me that silver is set to have another strong year to follow the surge of 2020. In 2020, silver followed the same pattern as gold and stocks. It began the year with a slight gain, 
crashed during the worst of the pandemic panic, rallied back to new highs and then held those gains while trading in a fairly narrow range. The high for silver was $29.15 per ounce on August 10, 2020, just a few days after gold hit its high for the year. What are the factors affecting the price of silver going forward? We should expect geopolitical stress as North Korea, China, Russia and Iran are all expected to test the resolve of the new Biden administration. This does not mean war will result, but it does mean we can expect hot spots to become tenser. This list of hot spots includes the Taiwan Strait, the South China Sea, the Straits of Hormuz, Ukraine and the Korean Peninsula. Our enemies will probe in all directions to see if Biden will stand firm or give ground. This expected tension is bullish for the prices of precious metals. Interest rates will remain at zero for short-term rates and 1% or less for long-term rates through all of 2021. That's bullish for silver because silver competes with interest-bearing instruments for investor dollars. Lower interest rates tilt that competition in favor of silver. The dollar should remain weak due to zero interest rates and weak economic growth. Don't believe the narrative about a V-shaped recovery and pent-up demand. The economy is locking down again because the pandemic is worse now than it was last spring. Small business is being destroyed, and unemployment is rising. With credit losses emerging, silver becomes a safe haven. Finally, the Biden administration and its Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, have embraced modern monetary theory in all but name. This means a $3 trillion deficit in fiscal 2021 on top of the $4 trillion deficit in fiscal 2020. The Federal Reserve has chipped in with $4 trillion of money printing in the past year. Even if inflation does not emerge immediately, inflationary expectations are on the rise. That's also bullish for silver. All of these factors, geopolitics, interest rates, exchange rates and inflation, are set to boost the price of silver in 2021. This was The Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. And thanks for your valuable feedback. Stay safe and healthy friends.